All right, I am going to go over here to this node 2022A. Um, I have a database on here uh, called, I thought it was on here, maybe it's on, yeah, called Ledger Demo. Um, but I'm actually going to drop that database and, and we're going to start from scratch here. So we're going to start with append only. So we're going to delete this database. And by the way, most of this demo script is straight out of the Microsoft documentation. So like I said, this is easy to try on your own on just a developer edition, SQL 2022. Um, I did not say close existing connections and that was a mistake. So let's, let's look at, take a look at what we're gonna do, right? We're going to create the database. We're gonna create a schema called access control. We're gonna create a table with three columns, employee ID, access operation description and a timestamp. And we're going to say with ledger equals on, append only equals on. Okay, so I'm creating an append only ledger table. And where did we end up with our drone? It's probably, it's still there. So I am going to do this. How about if we'll just drop table? Okay, so we're gonna create this table like that, All right? So now in my ledger demo database, I have a single user table. Actually, I probably still have the updatable one too, All right? Notice that in SSMS, it tells me, hey, this is an append only ledger table, All right? Um, if I look at its columns, I see the three columns that I created, but I also see this ledger start transaction ID and ledger start sequence number. This is metadata that you're going to put in every ledger table, right? Whether you specify it or not, right? Notice it also tracks dropped columns, right? If I change the schema of that table, right? Okay, so it's an empty table. If I just query that table, I see an empty table with my three columns. I don't see these extra ledger columns unless I ask for them, okay? So I can do that by saying, select star and add those column names. Right? Um, or, I can say select from object name underscore ledger. And that gives me that system view that includes my three actual columns, as well as transaction ID, sequence number, operation type, and description. Okay, so just be aware of that. Okay, let's put some data in our table. So we're going to insert one row into our access control table. If I look at this guy, I see my data. But if I do this select star and I add those ledger columns, what I'm gonna see is a transaction ID associated with the ledger, right? So all of the rows included in that transaction would have that transaction ID, okay? Ledger start, Whenever you see ledger start, that's an insert. Ledger end is a delete. A start and an end are involved with updates, right? To kind of see when you look in the history tables when we get to updatable, okay? If I look at the ledger system view, it includes the operation type was an insert along with the ID and the sequence number. And for an append only table, it's only ever gonna be insert, right? If I look at this database ledger transactions view, I can see all the transaction IDs that I've had since I created this database, right? Some of those were from last night, some of them are from just now. And what it has is it has that ledger transaction ID, the block ID, 
and the hash, right? And it's going to record a ledger transaction for every transaction, okay? Let's try to update it. So I'm gonna try to change the timestamp for that row. Updates are not allowed for append-only ledger tables. And again, I'm a sysadmin on this box, right? This is, this is flat out not updatable, okay? That's how append-only works. Append-only is pretty simple, right? Um, we don't have the history table, but we can do things like, you know, if we know we have the transaction ID in this ledger view associated with this, and I've got my database ledger transactions table, then I can go to the transaction, I can see when it happened and who did it, right? Who was logged in as well as the hash. So um, pretty, pretty cool technology. All right, let's talk about updatable tables, let's see. So for updatable, same thing, I'll go ahead and just drop the table to start with. Right, so we've got a customer ID, first and last name, and a balance, okay? This time, um, system version to equals on, and then we're going to specify the name of the account table, ledger equals on, okay? In a ledger database, every table would be updatable like this. So um, we'll go ahead and do that. Notice what we have now. We have our account balance table that's empty. We also automatically have this account balance history table, right? So if I go and I look at my SSMS, I have account balance that says it's an updatable ledger. Notice the, the balance history table doesn't even show up here, right? It really is related to this table. So it shows up underneath it, right? And we can see all of the columns that we get, okay? Um, we also see, you know, drop tables. So, so notice those two tables that I dropped and recreated. There are events here um, in SQL Server that that happened, okay? I also have my account balance ledger view that has those same columns, transaction ID, sequence number, operation type, and description. All right, so let's add one row and we're gonna see we have our row in the balance table. There's nothing in the history table because nothing's changed. The ledger table looks the exact same way as it did for append only. Now I'm going to do a second transaction. This time I'm going to insert three rows in one transaction. Okay. Now I have all four of my rows in the balance table. Nothing in the history because history is only if a row changes, if it gets deleted or updated. If I look at my ledger, I see that these are all inserts, but notice the transaction ID. When I inserted one row, the transaction ID is 1101. When I insert multiple rows, the transaction ID is 1104, one transaction. That's where the sequence number comes in. This was row zero, row one, row two of what got changed in that transaction, okay? So everything ties back to a ledger transaction, which has a hash associated with it, as well as you can see who did it, okay? All right, let's go update a row. So what we're gonna do, if we look at our balances, customer ID one has a balance of 50. Let's set the balance to 100. Balance table looks the same way as it would in a non-ledger table. We have a new balance. But if we look at the history table, we have this historical record that says, hey, in this transaction 1101, this was inserted and the balance was 50, right? If I look at the ledger table, I actually get multiple rows for this. That's what, this is why this is called a ledger, right? If you think of this like from an accounting standpoint, right? Where you have, you know, you don't ever delete anything in an accounting system, right? You have additional entries, right? So in the ledger, I have the row inserted as 100, 
obviously two, three, and four haven't changed, but it has an insert in transaction ID 1101 where the value is 50, and it has a delete of that value 50 in transaction ID 1121. So that ledger table is actually a ledger of what has happened in this updatable table over time. So that's how updatable works, okay? Last thing I'm gonna do is create a database as a ledger database. So what we're gonna do is ledger demo two, and we're gonna go to options, and we're gonna go down to is ledger database. True. Okay. So I've got this ledger demo too. Notice it's got like this kind of little icon that shows that it's a ledger database. It has no tables in it, right? If I create a table, look what it did. It added the start and end transaction ID, start and end sequence number, right? It automatically made that table a updatable ledger table, okay? So, um, and we can see that it's an updatable ledger Right. If we were to script that table, we would see all that. We see the ledger history for. Um, this is why you don't ever want to create tables in the GUI, right? Because it does stupid stuff like this, right? <laughs> for the name as opposed to you actually doing it. But, um, and I haven't actually tried this. If we script this, how good is SMS, SSMS at this? Yeah, it's got the system versioning on history table. So then you could, you know, you could, you could change. You can also specify names for those columns, those generated columns, if you want to, right? So you don't have to use the system generated names, um, but that's Ledger.